Hi, I want to take just a couple minutes to talk about vacuum systems that I've used over the years to build foam core wings. Uh, I started building uh, RC aircraft probably 30 years ago. Uh, stick built many aircraft, um, then started building them from kits, and I have built many uh, sheeted foam core wings over the years. But until a few years ago, uh, I always used the traditional method uh, of sheeting where you would just take the, the husk, put the foam core in there. Uh, with some glue, stack weight on top of it, and um, hope for the best. Uh, a lot of times that worked very, very well, and sometimes uh, it did not. Um, I had wanted to use a vacuum system for uh, many years and thought uh, wrongly, assumed wrongly that it was cost prohibitive for me to get into. Uh, I had seen some YouTube videos where guys were very successfully building foam core wings using vacuum bags. But none of them really talked about the systems that they had um, and how cheaply you can get into that. Uh, finally, uh, I realized that uh, there are a couple of ways to do it. One way is very cheap, uh, and that's the way that I got into um, vacuum bagging, is a continuous run system. Uh, a continuous run system just simply means that the pump is running the entire time and there's some sort of little uh, valve on top. Uh, this particular pump, which I, I got for free, uh, dug it out of a recycle bin. A friend of mine dug it out of a recycle bin for me. It happens to be a medical respirator, uh, or excuse me, an aspiration pump. Uh, then uh, it has a bleeder valve on top of it, much like we're accustomed to with a glow engine. It's just got a needle valve there, and that's how you adjust um, the inches of mercury, the equivalent to, to pressure in vacuum. So uh, you can just set the vacuum level just like we would a, uh, a needle valve there using this needle valve. Uh, and for our purposes, we run about uh, eight to 12 inches of mercury. Uh, and you can just adjust that. There was a little uh, uh, gauge here. I don't know where I've put that gauge. I, I stopped using this pump about a year ago. Uh, and you just simply dial it to uh, eight to 10 inches, per, hook your little hose on there. Uh, and it runs continuously uh, for the two and a half or three hours that you have the wing core in the bag. Uh, that's great if you're doing a low number of wing cores, otherwise this thing's gonna run uh, continuously all day long. Uh, it didn't have a problem doing that. Uh, it never got warm, never got hot. Uh, after a couple of years of doing it though, it sounded like it was fixing to throw a rod and I, uh, I upgraded to what I'm using now. Uh, I have also used uh, HVAC pumps. These are uh, super heavy duty, duty pumps. I've got um, four or five of these sitting around that uh, HVAC companies uh, gave me. Uh, when they uh, use these, they, they pull an awful lot of vacuum uh, on uh, heating and air systems to, to clean them out. And it's way higher levels of vacuum than we require with, uh, with foam. So this is a uh, way overkill for what we would need. Uh, the downsides to, to this type of pump is it's very loud, uh, but it's in incredibly durable. Uh, although this pump would be uh, worn out for the HVA system, it worked great for me for a couple of years. Um, and this was another one that I used. This one actually has a uh, uh, gauge built on the front of it, which was kind of cool. Uh, and both of these have a valve on the side where you can adjust the pressure uh, or inches of mercury. Uh, and that was nice and convenient. The downside to these pumps are uh, they're heavy. Uh, they will uh, mist out just the tiniest bit of oil because they are an oil type pump. Uh, that was never a problem for me. Um, I would just take a little paper towel and uh, this is the exhaust where it comes out the top or, or the vent where it comes out of the crankcase motor. Uh, I would take a paper towel and just set over that and it would catch any mist that would happen to come out of there. Um, that was never a problem for me. But just to let you know that uh, that can happen. Now, both of these pumps I got for free, of course. Uh, they were throwing them away because they would not work uh, in their application. I guess years ago, they would rebuild these pumps, uh, but now, uh, it's so easy or so cheap to buy the new ones, they just, they just throw the old ones away once they get to a point where they won't hold the levels of vacuum that they need to deal with. Uh, so these are good pumps and uh, you can get them for free. 
Uh, this was a good, a very nice little pump for me and it worked for free. But uh, these systems were continuous run, so uh, you'd have to sit there and listen to that motor running for about two and a half or three hours. Uh, and certainly you would never want to leave it alone. The uh, step up from that um, is, which is what I did after a couple of years of uh, successfully building uh, foam core wings with uh, free pumps and very little um, um, monetary outlay in, in supplies. You're, all you need is a gauge and you can buy those online very cheaply for uh, 10 or 15 bucks. Uh, and a little valve that you can just buy at the hardware store to control the amount of vacuum that you're pulling. Uh, the next step up from that obviously is a uh, um, auto shutoff system, uh, which is what I have here. I know it looks kind of complicated here, and this is not a, uh, a class or, or in service on uh, putting these things together. Uh, but I will tell you that there is a fantastic resource out there uh, that you can go to uh, very easily. Uh, I found joewoodworker.com several years ago, uh, and I, I can't speak enough about how fantastic of a resource uh, those guys are. Uh, if you uh, want to build your own system, uh, which is what I did here. Um, uh, they will sell you every every single part that you need separately, or they'll sell you the entire kit that you need. Um, for a long time, I used this system with one of these pumps, uh, or all three of these pumps have actually been sitting right there. Uh, and then just past this last year, I upgraded to a, a, a better pump. Uh, all of these parts are pretty cheap. Uh, this happens to be the controller, the uh, uh, vacuum controller you just turn a little knob on the top and you can in conjunction with the uh, uh, vacuum gauge there you can set the pressure that you need and like I said for uh, this system for this application we want to run about 10 inches of mercury and it'll cut itself off uh, and it did it cut itself off at exactly 10 there uh, this one has two lines coming off of it so I can run two vacuum bags at the same time um, and when it gets down to about eight inches of mercury it will will cut itself back on. Um, if you are diligent in all of your connections here with the uh, Teflon tape uh, you have minimal leaks. Uh, this system here will hold for about 20 minutes uh, before it clicks back on and when it does click on it uh, it only stays on for uh, maybe five or six seconds and then cuts itself back off. So uh, my point here is you don't have to build a, uh, an elaborate system to start with. All of this stuff is to turn this pump on when it reaches, when this, uh, uh, when this item here uh, determines that the pressure has dropped a certain amount. So uh, it cuts itself off at 10 inches of mercury and turns itself back on between seven and a half and eight inches of mercury. Uh, this system here, we adjust uh, the continuous run, we adjust the um, pressure or inches of mercury there uh, with a needle valve and it runs continuously. So uh, you can get into vacuum bagging very cheap with a continuous run. Uh, you can spend a little bit more money and have the convenience of a uh, auto shut off. And again, um, both of uh, these systems are, are described in detail at joewoodworker.com. Uh, again, a fantastic uh, resource. They don't pay me, uh, and I'm sure that he doesn't know that I'm, I'm talking about them, uh, but they are a fantastic resource uh, for both learning how to put these systems together and purchasing what you need. Uh, like I said, you can buy each component individually or you can buy the entire system. And uh, on their website, they have photographs of uh, where a lot of guys have put very elaborate systems together. I need you to put mine quickly, uh, put mine together very quickly one afternoon. So I just slapped it together and started using it. Uh, one of the next things I want to talk about is vacuum bags. Uh, this is a, va a vinyl vacuum bag, very easy to use. Uh, it's, it's probably the cheapest way to get into vacuum bags. Uh, it's a very thin bag. Um, and they are durable uh, as long as you take care of them and it uses a, a little uh, two-piece seal you just put the, uh, the blue piece underneath and then stick the white rod down and it, it pinches the bag and closes it off and there are little, little uh, 
you poke a hole in the back wherever you need to and uh, screw in a little fitting that you can hook your air hose to. Uh, and this is a, this is simply a, a sleeve, a vinyl sleeve that's open on one end uh, or actually open on both ends and uh, you cut it to whatever length you want and build your custom bags. So I used those very successfully for many years uh, and then ultimately I upgraded uh, a couple of years back to a uh, polyurethane bag. This happens to be a 30 mil polyurethane bag. Uh, I got it from joewoodworker.com. I use this bag uh, all day, uh, just about every day, uh, and it is still in just as good a condition as it was when I bought it a couple of years ago. I am tickled to death with it, but they're not cheap. They're about $150 for this one, which is two foot by four foot. Uh, I think that's four foot. Yes. Uh, which handles uh, any size wing that I want to build. I was a little reluctant uh, spending $150 for a vacuum bag. Uh, but I went ahead and uh, bit the bullet after uh, developing leaks in, in this particular, in the vinyl bag. Uh, the problem with a vinyl bag, um, obviously there's a pros and cons. Uh, the pros are that it's cheap and it's easy to build your own uh, length of bag. Uh, the cons are they're not anywhere near as durable and uh, pliable as the polyurethane bag. Also, the uh, valve, is you screw the valve in, of course it does have an old, a rubber seal on the bottom. Uh, I found that after uh, probably 10 or 12 uses, it would be difficult for me to achieve a good seal there. I'd have to slice the bag off, move the, the uh, nipple back just a little bit. Uh, also, the uh, vinyl, the thin vinyl bags are not as forgiving uh, when they get poked by a piece of uh, fiberglass. Uh, although I go to great lengths uh, to protect my bags, this is a foam four wing that just came out of the uh, vacuum bag. So you can see the core in here. Uh, and I have put tape across there to protect the bag, not to hold the, the assembly together. These pieces of tape hold the assembly together, but this tape is simply here to keep the uh, fiberglass and epoxy away from the bag. Uh, when the fiberglass is wet uh, and the, um, with the epoxy, of course it's pliable and soft, but when it dries, uh, it, it gets obviously very stiff and um, you'll have the equivalent of little needles sticking out. So uh, while that fiberglass is nice and wet, I like to put a piece of uh, tape on it that pushes it over and uh, holds it down safe in the bag. So despite the fact that I do that, uh, invariably uh, something will uh, poke a tiny hole in one of these vinyl bags um, and you'll develop a, a very tiny leak, which is uh, kind of difficult to find and uh, either mend with a piece of tape um, or ultimately I would end up changing bags. Uh, like I said, I upgraded to the uh, polyurethane bags uh, a couple years ago, and I use these bags all day, ever, just about every day, like I said, and um, they are still, knock on wood, working just as good as the day that I bought them. So, uh, ultimately the point is, uh, don't be intimidated um, and not build foam core wings because you think that it's cost prohibitive. Uh, there are plenty of these pumps out there that are free uh, and the components to the systems are, are relatively cheap. So uh, if, even if you wanted to build an auto uh, cycling machine, uh, if you go to joewoodworker.com you'll see that the components to build those are very cheap. If you want to build a, do like I did, and build a continuous run system for a while uh, to see if that's something you want to get into or, or um, is something that you enjoy doing, uh, that's what I would encourage you do. Um, you could do it for almost nothing. All you need is a uh, pump that you can run for free, some way to gauge uh, or to uh, meter the amount of vacuum coming out of it. 
uh, and then some way to gauge that with a little gauge that you can buy online pretty cheap. So don't be intimidated uh, by the, the potential cost or the perceived cost of getting into vacuum systems. You can do it very cheaply.